Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dolled Up Desserts Baking Channel. This is video number one on how to bake anything vegan. And today I'm really excited because we are talking about fats. Fat has really gotten a bad rep, especially in the 90s and 2000s, a lot of fat-free foods, uh, low fat, all that stuff. It's super important for baked goods. You can't cut out on the fat. And my keto friends will totally feel me on that. But fat is a super important part of any baked good for two really important reasons. The first and the most obvious one is for taste. In traditional baking with butter, the fat really gives it that rich, moist fudginess. It gives it that light airiness. It gives it that softness, that tenderness, and it gives it flavor, especially if you're using a really high quality, high fat percentage butter. The lesser known reason why fat is important, which is actually the most important reason why fat needs to be in a baked good is for aeration. So most fats like butter contain a certain percentage of water. And in the oven, when your baked goods start to heat up and start baking, what happens is that water evaporates from the fat and then the fat actually maintains whatever air pocket, bubble, flake that was created to, and it kind of holds it all together to make sure that you your baked good is tender and light and fluffy while still being moist and flavorful. It's magic, really. In traditional baking, you get your fat primarily from the butter or oil that you use in your baked good, from eggs, and also from any sort of creams or milks that you put into a baked good. You also can get a lot of fat from if you use chocolate in your baked good, because the cocoa butter adds that fat that normally would not be there with the butter. So you have to always be mindful of how much fat is going into a baked good, because you can't have too much of it. Otherwise, that beautiful trait that your fat provides to make something flaky and tender and hold structure won't actually happen and your baked goods just gonna deep fry. When I say deep fry, it's a term that my lovely mother always used is when you have a cookie on your baking sheet and it's got too much butter in it because it's too soft and you can just open the oven and you can hear it sizzling, you can see it bubbling. It's basically cooking from the inside out and at the end the cookie's just like super like crunchy and disgusting and there's no structure and it's just really oily and gross. There's always a fine balance with fat. There is a right amount for a baked good. You cannot have too much of it and at the same time you also cannot have any of it. There are people in this world and I totally feel you especially if you have some conditions with your liver or your bile ducts uh, that cannot eat a high fat diet. This can be very challenging to accommodate for because if you're doing a low fat diet for a health related reason oftentimes you're not going to get that same texture as you would normally in a baked good. So if you are on a low fat diet don't get your hopes up that your baked good is going to taste as light and fluffy and flaky as it would with fat in it because you can't really accomplish that without it. Oftentimes low to no fat replacements tend to be like an applesauce or a fruit puree and although those provide the moisture that you're getting from fat it's not providing that structural integrity that fats provide when that liquid evaporates. If you are low fat that's what you have to do but if you can have fat don't cut it out use it to your advantage. It's really, really important, especially if you're trying to get the best results possible. When it comes to replacing fats in a dairy-free, egg-free, cruelty-free, vegan baked good, there are a couple of options and it really depends on what you're making and what egg replacer you're using. Because eggs provide that extra fat typically in a baked good, as well as do a billion other things, eggs are the most important ingredient in a baked good and it really changes the game when it comes to vegan baking when you don't use eggs. There are other places where fat comes from when you are baking. Uh, in your non-dairy milks, in your if you add yogurts, um, if you add things like avocado or fatty fruits. Cream cheese is another option as well too. All of these will add some fat to your baked good. Just all of them have different reasons for being in a baked good and most of the time I don't use a lot of these because you don't need them. The other thing too to help mimic fats and help create that texture is adding extra protein and not protein powder like you put in your smoothie. I mean like an isolate, like a soy isolate protein can really help in moderation in a baked good to help create that tender texture or that fluffiness. But it depends on where you're using it. I wouldn't go and put protein powder into anything. Anyways, that is my summary of fats and vegan baking. Next week, I'm gonna go through the different kinds of typical vegan fat replacements and explain kind of the pros and the cons of each of them and when you should use them and when you should not. But if you like this video and you wanna stay up to date with all the series on how to bake anything vegan, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell. And if you like this video and you wanna learn more about vegan baking or just check us out and see who we are, follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Dolled Up Desserts Baking. Thanks for watching.